Fields are a fundamental concept in physics. We use them to explain how forces act on objects. Although we can't see fields, there is a way to create a picture of a field. Imagine placing a test particle in a field and seeing how the particle moves. That gives us the strength and direction of the field at a single point. By repeating the process at other points, we can build up a picture of the whole field. The result is called a field diagram. For an electric field, the test particle we use is a positive charge. For a magnetic field, we use a small bar magnet. And for a gravitational field, we use any particle with mass. In each case, the lines on a field diagram show the direction of the field at every point. The closer the lines are together, the stronger the field is at that point. If two particles pass each other without changing speed or direction, we say there is no interaction between them. If the particles pass each other and change speed and direction, we say there is an interaction. The important difference is the exchange of energy that takes place when particles interact. The total amount of energy is unchanged, that's the law of conservation of energy, but when two particles interact, they exchange energy. In what's called the classical description of an interaction, it's the field that transfers this energy. It doesn't matter whether it's an electric, magnetic or gravitational field. In each case, its role is the same. That is, to transfer energy between interacting particles. Magnetic and electric fields are closely related. In fact, physicists believe they're the same thing. How can this be? It all depends on your point of view. Imagine that you're sitting in a stationary car at the traffic lights and the car next to you eases forward. Is that really what happens? Or is your car rolling backwards? With no other points of reference around you, you won't be able to tell who is moving. This is a key element of Einstein's special theory of relativity. We can apply this idea to understanding what's going on with electric and magnetic fields. We know an electric field surrounds a charged particle. If the charge is moving, a magnetic field also surrounds it. This happens because a moving charge is a current, and a current generates a magnetic field. It doesn't matter whether it's us or the charge that's moving. Einstein's theory of relativity states that we can't tell the difference. Now think about this situation. If we're moving relative to a charged particle, or a charged particle is moving relative to us, which is the same thing, we'll see both an electric and a magnetic field surrounding the charge. This is because a moving charge generates a magnetic field. But what about another person who's stationary relative to the same charged particle? What will they see? They will see only an electric field, as from their point of view, the charge is not moving and therefore does not generate a magnetic field. So, is the charged particle surrounded by a magnetic field or not? It's surrounded by an electromagnetic field, and how that field appears to us depends upon our motion relative to the charge. Electrons orbiting atoms are in motion relative to us, and they are electrically charged, so they too set up electric and magnetic fields. If we can persuade large numbers of atoms to align, these tiny magnetic fields can add together to create a much stronger magnetic field. That is how permanent magnets are formed. When we think of a pair of billiard balls bouncing off each other, we have no problem making sense of this process using classical mechanics. When we think of a pair of electrons approaching each other and repelling each other without actually touching, the classical explanation is that the electromagnetic field has transferred energy between them. However, you may still wonder exactly what a field is made of. When subatomic particles like electrons approach each other very closely, the classical description using an electromagnetic field doesn't work. We have to replace it with what's called a quantum theory. The quantum description of a field sounds rather far-fetched at first. It says that a field is made up of a constant stream of particles that are being emitted and absorbed. When two electrons interact, it's because they are exchanging these particles. We know moving particles carry energy, 
so they provide a natural way to transfer energy from one electron to another. The particles that make up a field are different to normal particles that we're more familiar with, like electrons. These different particles are called virtual particles. So, how do we know whether virtual particles really exist? It turns out that this theory, known as quantum electrodynamics, or QED, makes predictions about certain physical constants. These predictions have been tested in the laboratory, and measurements yield agreement to 12 decimal places with theory. This makes it one of the best tested theories in physics. And what are virtual particles? Well, that's a story for another day.